Father God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, I pray anybody watching this will get touched by the Holy Spirit and have a revelation from God. All right, here's a revelation. What is lukewarm? Are Catholics saved? What about Mennonites or Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses? Are they saved? How do you define what Christianity really is? What's the actual definition of a Christian? When you look at Catholicism, a lot of Christians say, well, they worship Mary, they have the Pope and priests. That's not Christianity. And the, the Pentecostals, they all speak in tongues. And they'll point at the Baptists and say, those Baptists need to get saved because they don't even have the Holy Spirit. And meanwhile, the Baptists are pointing at the Pentecostals saying, oh, <laughs> y'all are crazy jumping around and dancing. We've got the Word of God. We read our Bible every day. Okay, so I mean, there's a whole debate on who's saved and who's not, who's a Christian, what's a Christian, what's a real Christian, what... Well, I'll tell you, this is a real simple, there's a real simple solution that's going to really just narrow it, just clean everything out, and just cut away all the, all the jargon and all the jive, all the jive talk, all the mystery about who's saved. It's real simple. It's called the mark of the beast. Now you say, what? Yeah, the Bible says anyone who takes that mark of the beast is for sure going to hell. That's what the Bible says. The Bible also says that the day of the Lord will not come until the, after there's a great falling away and brother will betray brother to death. So here's the point. Here's what I'm saying. You want to know who the true Christians are? Who the really saved people are? Wait for the mark of the beast to come out and watch and see who takes it and who doesn't. The people who take the mark of the beast, those are the people who are not saved. The people who do take the mark of the beast, wait, wait, did I say that wrong? What did I just say? The people who don't take the mark of the beast, those are the people who are saved. The people who do take the mark of the beast are the people who not saved. Okay? So it's real simple. Who's lukewarm? Who's not lukewarm? Well, I'll tell you what. If everybody in the neighborhood is taking the mark of the beast and you can't buy or sell anything, you can't eat, you can't do anything, and you still won't take that mark of the beast because you believe in Jesus and he's your savior and you're in love with God and there ain't nothing. You would rather die. You would rather starve. And anyway, you've already obeyed God and have gone through times of fasting anyhow. And when they come to take your Mercedes Benz, when they come to take your car and, and they come to sweep the house, they're going to go through and sweep all the neighborhoods. That's going to happen. And what's that mean? They're going to go house to house and find anybody who doesn't have the mark of the beast and say, you take this mark or we kill you on the spot. And if you won't take that mark of the beast, and guess what? We're going to see who really is saved because some people are get right on their knees and say, cut my head off then. And others will be like, whoop, me look. And they'll say, look, your house is right there. You take the mark of the beast, we leave, you go right back home. You just have it, it takes five minutes. You go, you know, you probably have to sit down and fill out some paperwork, social security number, date of birth, maiden name, you know, city of birth, you know, nation of resident, you know, are you citizenship. Citizen of the United States, citizen of West Germany, citizen of France, you know, whatever it is. Fill out the paperwork, then they type you into the computer, and then they get their little chip ready to 
to, and then they do some sort of tattoo on the outside. I don't know. I don't know exactly how it's going to be. But I will tell you this. Those who take it and those who don't take it is also going to be the whole debate on who's lukewarm and who's not lukewarm. Who's saved and who's not saved. Real simple. It's going to really make a real clear line in the sand. So I'm just saying, get your heart right with God and be ready. Because some Christians, they think, they think we're going to get raptured out. Oh, I'm just waiting for the rapture. <laughs> what are you going to do when you're waiting for the rapture? They come knocking on your door. What are you going to do when the rapture didn't happen? <laughs> what are you going to do when you think maybe the rapture did happen? Maybe the rapture happened and I missed it. What if I, I think I missed the rapture? What are you going to do if you think you missed the rapture and they come to put that mark of the beast on you? You're going to be like, I guess I missed the rapture anywho. I guess I'm going to have to take that mark of the beast. I guess there's no point in me going through any more trials. After all, I missed the rapture. No. When the mark of the beast comes out, it doesn't mean you missed the rapture. Okay, that's the whole point. You didn't miss the rapture. You're still, you're still alive. Okay? The rapture hasn't happened yet. All right? And things are going to get so bad that there's going to be groups of Christians like hiding out. And finally, that rapture is going to come. But the Bible says... That it's going to require patient endurance on the part of the faith uh, of the saints and those who hold to Jesus. All right, so I might have to. <laughs> Somebody is going to watch this and get a revelation. <laughs> Hello, what are you going to do if you think it's pre-tribulation rapture and the mark of the beast comes out? So you're thinking. Well, I thought that the rapture is supposed to happen before the mark of the beast comes out. Then the mark of the beast comes out, and you're running around thinking, I must have missed the rapture. So you're going to be willing to take that mark. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, when you see the mark of the beast, don't take the mark of the beast. It means the rapture has not yet occurred, okay? There's going to be a great falling away. Now, you'll know that we're closer to the rapture, when one, there's a great falling away, okay? Two, Revelation chapter 6, where it says the fifth seal was pulled. God says, they say, how long, God, before you pour out your wrath on the wicked? Okay, and God says, wait, there's a still some more people who need to be put to death for their faith. And when that number is complete, then we go up. It's in the Bible. Okay, it's all, I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> Problem is you have, you've listened to teaching from preachers who don't understand God's word and they just get up there, they want to preach something, but instead of waiting on God and hearing what the Holy Spirit is telling them, instead of relying on the Holy Spirit for their revelation, they get on the internet and do a research thing and try to figure it out. They, get, they, they read somebody's book about end time prophecy. And then they preach that from the pulpit. Now, if the person who wrote that book was wrong, then they're going to preach something wrong from their pulpit. That's why we need to be dependent in hearing from the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us in the way we read our Bible. So if you're just reading your Bible and studying your Bible, Jesus said to the Pharisees, he said, you diligently study the Bible, and yet you still miss the Messiah. And he said, these are the same scriptures that testify about me. And you still miss it. I mean, Jesus was the Messiah. They should have said, wait a minute. This guy fulfills every single scripture. That's the guy. But instead, they misinterpreted and misunderstood the Bible because they weren't dependent on understanding the Bible by the Holy Spirit. So when the man of God comes along, who's operating by that Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that showed them what the Bible says would be the same Holy Spirit that jumps in their heart and says, that's the Messiah right there. That's him. That's Jesus. But instead, they're like, I don't need the Holy Spirit. I'm going to figure this Bible out myself. 
and they're teaching all this stuff, and they're the big boss man, and they're the they're the rabbi of the day, you know, just like today. I'm telling you, it's happening. Same thing is happening today. They don't want to. And then when somebody comes by and tells them something by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that God is saying this in the name of Jesus, they're like, "Well, I reject that because that's not what I read by." Preacher so-and-so, you know, whoever it is, whatever book they're reading, you know, this whole Left Behind series. <laughs> Come on, man. You ain't going to be Kurt Cameron running around. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you ain't going to have some crazy, like, melodramatic scene with the Antichrist who has fangs and all that. <laughs> Talk about a stupid movie. I never actually saw the movie. I couldn't watch the whole thing. I think I watched the first 10 minutes. I was just like, this is so cheesy. <laughs> like, you know, if, if it was inspired by the Holy Spirit, you'd at least be riveted by it. You'd be like, wow, I got to see this. <laughs> anyway, it's time to get saved. Get your heart right with God. Stop running around doing all sorts of stuff in the world. Pay your tithe. Give your offerings. Lay down the things of the world and serve God in the name of Jesus. Amen.